G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Well, good day viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. The things we do for art is pretty amazing. I've just been riding uh, on a freezing cold winter day down near Shepparton, near Merrigam, on a Harley Davidson and I've come to see an amazing artist, Mr John Anderson. Welcome to the show, mate. Graham, thank you. It's wonderful, you. To, wonderful to be here. We're actually in John's uh, shed at the moment and uh, he's going to be taking us through the process today of actually how he puts his canvases together. And he makes his own and they're pretty spectacular looking stretches as well. But John and I have a very similar situation as far as our careers is concerned is that we're both avid or, or I was once uh, bird painters and John's a naive artist that paints birds in a really spectacular way you'll see a lot of the images screened in as we go along where did that influence come from I mean what why do you and I know that you spend a little bit of time in Indonesia you're a teacher I mean John's really the quintessential artist as far as sculptor pottery ceramics the guy does it all extremely right brain man unbelievably creative where did how did all that start and how did you develop that style that you've got now? Well, in the beginning, I started uh, drawing small pictures and painting small paintings. Yeah. And over the last sort of 20 odd years, I've evolved to creating this product. I mean, your style is extremely different to what I've seen, particularly when it comes to uh, portraying our Australian native birds. And you're, you're an expert on the, on the Latin terminologies with them as well. I mean, you really want to know everything about start to finish. Uh, you've had Neville Cayley's book, what bird what, is that? What bird is that? And that's obviously influenced you a lot of the way. And Huge influence on as me a, as a child. Yeah, as a, as a kid you've obviously started drawing but developed this style yourself and it's ex extremely individual, it's amazing what he's done. Developed it to where it is now and um, we're going to go through the process today with John and see how he puts these stretches together. Uh, talk a little bit about his history as well as we go along and then we're going to go into his studio inside his beautiful country home and we're going to see some more of his works in there and then we're going to go through a couple of different processes a day on how he puts together what he does. So it's going to be a really exciting day. Pity it's so damn cold. It's okay. <laughs> it's warm here. We're getting the fires. There's fireplaces everywhere. But uh, we'll make a start on it, okay? Sounds good to me. Excellent. Okay, today we're going to, I'm going to show you how I make a frame. First of all, I, get, I buy this timber, three and a half inch hardwood plantation timber architrave, Australian hardwood, and I get them to plane the back off, off it. So I've got a nice flat back. Then, with my tape measure, I make my measures, and I make a cut like this. Pretty simple. It's fairly straightforward, fairly simple. But you like that wide format, don't you? I love that deep format frame. Yeah, it's very, it's very iconic towards your work as well. I get a chance, I can write my signature on it. Yeah. I can tell the story around the edge. I don't have to put anything on the frame, Excellent. on the front. All right, now what now? Okay, so next I'd make a 45 degree cut. And I always work nice and clean. Okay, well, now I've cut out four pieces of timber, which will eventually become my frame. So what I have to do is I'll put it over here on the bench and I'll measure it up and see if it's all fitting nicely together. That's a good idea. You just, no point in starting to stick it together if it doesn't fit properly, does it? So the next start, stage of the process um, is I drill some holes which is easier than to just nail the wood, nail the timber, the uh, nail into the wood. Oh, 
always work clean. Try to be fairly precise with your measurements and your cuts. Done. Excellent. Okay, the next stage of assembling this frame, I'm going to tack it together. So first of all, I put a little bit of glue. So you need a lot of glue or just? Oh, just enough. Just enough to? Make it happen. Sure. And then I literally tack it together. Okay, so I've tacked these together here. Um, I'll turn it around and tack the other corners together. Like this. Part of the frame that I'm going to put in is the brace in the middle. Sometimes when you stretch the canvas, if you pull it a bit too tight, you end up with your frame shaped like this. So you've got to keep it fairly well braced. I have a piece of timber here and I just make it, I just measure it to the size of the timber and cut it. So I've put a bit of glue on there. I've marked out basically my centre. And now I just tack it together. And repeat the process. So we've finished the frame. Now let's stretch some canvas okay. over that frame. So what type of canvas you got here? This is a seven ounce cotton duck. That's oh. enough. Okay. Beautiful. Lovely. Now, we're putting this curved edge down. Okay, with my little ruler, I've marked out three inches for the depth plus half an inch for the width. So we want to cut out four inches of canvas all the way around. Okay, that's pretty much what I do here. Okay. And with my trusty pair of scissors, I will cut out. All the way through. Actually, right to the end. Up I go. Okay. To begin stretching the canvas, I would start off in the middle on both ends. I would pull it fairly tight with my fingers just to get it going and I would put in a staple. So now you go to the other side, so you basically you go 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Yep, and keep opposites, opposites as you're going around. 9 o'clock, okay. So I lift the canvas up yep. to the edge and then hold on to it. Too tight. Yeah. And then I just repeat the process. Okay, so you got an iron there, bud. Yes. This is the final stage of preparing this canvas. And those folds that yeah. we made before, I iron them in and iron them nice and flat. Oh, yeah. Get these edges nice and neat, nice and flat. Look at that. All right, John, that's amazing. It's yeah. tight as a drum as well. <laughs> but generally what you would do now is you would prime this. That's right. Uh, that'll take a little while to dry. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into... John's studio and we're going to go through some techniques uh, on some canvases that he's got in there uh, on just how he does what he does. It's really fascinating, really fine work and as I said a very naive type style but let's head into the studio and we'll go from there. Sounds good.
Okay, well we've just come out of the shed and uh, done the canvas with John, stretched it all, looks fantastic. In John's studio at the moment, now he's got a couple of studios, he gets around the country quite a bit, but we're in his studio down at Merrigum, and as you can see he's made a really solid start on a painting, but we're going to go through a little bit of a few things, it's, it's very from the heart your work, isn't it? Um, it's a very organic style, absolutely. Yeah, but what we're going to do is, he's, he's suddenly come to a place where he's really not happy with this particular section in yeah, here. Well, well what happened was when I composed this piece mm. and I started painting it and I realised I've got the black neck coming over the black body here and here and I'm thinking it, that doesn't sit right with me so I'm going to block that out okay. and repaint it. Let's go for it then. Okay. Okay I'm going to mask in this section here. And I'm going to paint out this little section of the painting here. And it's really because it's just not, it's just not doing it for you, is it? Yes, it, it's not working. Yeah. It doesn't sit right in my, in my, in my imagination. Okay. You know, it just doesn't work. So, so I'm going to modify this part. But it's a, it's a fabulous design, as you can see. I mean, they really do have, particularly a piece like this, has a, has a fairly oriental feel about it. I'm not sure if that's that Indonesian Maybe, maybe that's the gold. Is it? Okay. So. And this is a um, this an, is a chrome acrylic, acrylic gold, but they're two different types of gold, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. As you can see, that'll come straight up to the edge of that masking tape, and you can really sort of layer this stuff down quite quite thickly in the end. Yes. But, but obviously, with the techniques that you're using, you're best off, I would think, just building them on layers, and you're going to have to it, come it, over and top again. That's it. I'll have to do three or four layers on this to sort of blank it right out of the yeah. image. I mean, obviously, John being a, an avid. Uh, ornithological naive artist, that's the best way I could put it. Yeah. He knows all of the Latin names, he really engrosses himself so much in the process of understanding uh, Australia's beautiful birds and, and a lot of them these days are actually quite threatened as well. Uh, they're under incredible pressure yeah. from uh, loss of habitat, uh, the fox, the house yeah. cat. Yep. Terrible, terrible problems with our native birds. I didn't realise that the kookaburra was um, a yeah. little under threat as there well. There are pockets of sort of abundance, but yeah. in general, I think they're, they're all under pressure. The, but the beauty about your style as well is I can see that there are under, under, underlining areas yes. in there. You've changed your mind a few times. Three or four, this, it, yeah, fluid. It's a totally fluid thing. I'm continually evolving until I get to something that sits right in my mind, uh -huh. sits right in my heart, and looks good. You know yeah. what I mean? Because, I mean, Essentially, I want to create a beautiful painting. Sure. And, and, and you've got to, I mean, it's, it's a journey under any, any circumstances. Yes. And if you're not taking that journey, and you're allowed to do that. I mean, people will, I think, force pictures into a place sometimes where they're so rigid that there's just really no fluidity, as you said, going through yes. the piece at all. And I think that that's what John does, is he'll get to a place where he goes, that's not quite right, I don't feel good. Sometimes you can just turn your pictures to the wall as well, and walk away from them. I do that, a lot of artists do and just not indulge yourself in them whatsoever. Turn them around in two or three weeks time and you can obviously see something different than you hadn't seen when you turned the picture. Yes. What I might do is I might just let John work on this because obviously this goal has to dry but uh, what he tells me he's going to do is he's going to work on the spines of this particular ibis and then bring up some other highlights, um, but we'll come back uh, when that's a little dry. See you soon. Yeah. Okay, well that's dried off a little bit, but you want to really clean up those edges now, don't you? Yes, so what I'll do is I've got a little bit of black paint here, yep. and what I'll do is I'll just make these edges nice and neat again. And you're doing it with a Really nice fine, it's almost a rigger brush. Actually the one you've got in your hand is. Yes. But this one here is just just sort of in between somewhere. So looking at your work and your uh, your C V, you're a completely self taught painter. Yeah, for me, I am very much self taught. And it, you really use the paint directly out of the bottle as well too, don't yeah. you? There's the colours there. Yep. You don't muck around with it, it's just they'll take yep. that colour, I'll take that colour. Yep. I just take it straight out of the bottle, literally straight, straight out of the out, bottle. Straight off the lid. Yeah. Straight off the lid. But I do mix colours. Okay. I, I've been recently I've been mixing silver with blue. In fact, yeah, that little one you've got down there by your feet? Silver blue. Um, I've been mixing silver with blue and I'm getting like these iridescent colours. But this beautiful little painting, and it's it's a piece of artwork on its own, but I think yes. that you could probably put a number of these 
in various sections on your wall, which I think would look quite fabulous in the right type of room. Yes. But as you can see, yellow, straight out. Now, I'll do this over a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I'll put a couple of different layers of yellow into it, but yeah. uh, that's the line that I'll, I'll work with. Well, what we're going to do after this, because John has some pen techniques that he uses within his work as well, so we're, we're going to go from this one to a smaller one that he's got of some uh, some small... Yellow rump thornbill. Yellow rump thornbills, and um, we'll look at some more techniques with that as well. I've always felt compelled to paint pictures. I've always felt like being an artist. I've always felt it was a part of my vocabulary and it was something that I could do. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's with me all the time. Well, I mean, that's, that's what being truly right-brained is. Right-brained? You were born that way. I think so. And you told me before you were born at an early age. Well, that's what my mother keeps saying anyway. <laughs> I think that's great. That's what my old mum keeps telling me. <laughs> you were born at an early age, don't forget that. All right, well, we've, we've moved on to the second painting with the second technique that John's going to show us what he does. And you're actually using pens in this as well. What type of pens are they? Um, they're a uniball. Uniball, okay. Um, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, it's a Japanese pen. It's a Japanese pen. Get out of here. Best so, pen. So you've got different sized uh, nibs on the end of these? No, no, no. Just the one All size? the one standard format, yes. Oh, okay. So it's a really different. I have never seen anybody do this actually in their paintings before, but it really looks quite spectacular. You're going to demonstrate to us how you use the pens on a finished product as well, or, or almost finished anyway. Far away. Okay. So what I do is I paint the image. Yep. And then I put the line around it. I put the line around the painting with this and it just highlights it. It makes it a different image. Yeah, and that's just obviously very painstaking. Very painstaking. To do all Laborious. Of that. Have to be a little bit careful. Nice and neat. Always work neat is the best. Yeah. But this is the beauty about your work. When you look closely at it, there's these intricate, delicate details yes. all yes. through the whole thing. So do you ever use, when you're using the pens, do you use them just as a liner or do you shade with them as well? No, I just put a line around my painted form. Okay. It's like a highlight around each edge. It, it's like a defining line. Oh, it looks, it looks amazing. You're obviously using the chroma acryl paints, the, the acrylics. I don't think that you could do this with oils. No. It will just sl slide straight off Absolutely. the top. Absolutely. Yeah, the yeah. pen would not work with an oil-based paint. Um, this little bird, the yellow rump thornbill, it makes a, uh, a nest with a false nest at the top. Yes. And it makes a little side entrance and it goes into the, into the internal nest and lays its eggs Isn't inside just amazing. the nest. And the, the false nest at the top is because they have a host bird, which is one of the cuckoos. Okay. And uh, the cuckoo quite often lays an egg in this bird's nest. Yes. They are very similar. And uh, so this bird has developed uh, a strategy okay. to deceive the cuckoo by building a false nest in the top and a little secret side entrance. That's so amazing. it's sort of like its evolution yeah. uh, manifesting before our very eyes. That's yeah. wonderful. Yes. And I think with John's style, it really reaches out to the outer bounds of imagination and creativity. You can do so many things. You've got the initial structure of your work down there, but you can put so many other things in to the piece as you go along as well. It's great. Well, it's texture, isn't it? Yes. And it's imagination, and it's, it's, uh, it's texture. Very cathartic. You just sort of sit down once your paint's dry and yeah. use your pens to sort of wander off into another place. And I think part of when I look at your work, particularly in the area that you live with a lot of orchards, even the roads are full of fairly squared off all the way around. Yeah, exactly. There is a real pattern and it actually Agreed. appears in your work as well. Yes. Particularly with the clouds. The, the reoccurring motifs, yeah. yeah. Um, the clouds, absolutely. That's sort of, I've noticed the clouds seem to have flat bottoms around here and yeah. uh, I love that sort of flat bottom cloud. And yeah, it's, um, it certainly is a geometric environment. And it comes yeah. out in your work, absolutely does. So I usually put my signature on the side here. I think that's just great. And it's once again, it's uh, 
very much like you, very stylized. Yeah. All the way through. And you know, most, most artists stick their signature on the front. I leave the front for the painting. Yes. The painting says it all. Yeah, that's a great idea because you've got such these, these grand borders around the side of them. That yes. facilitates you being able to do that. Yes. And also I write things around the edge sometimes, okay. like um, um, what sort of bird it is. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a Latin name. Mm -hmm. um, just a general sort of somewhere to write without actually interfering with, 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 the, with the actual image. That's yeah. wonderful. Very laborious, very labour intensive, but you end up with a really good product. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, it's very much, um, you can see your um, your nature and your bush heritage in there because you really want to capture it all as much as you can. Well, it's always with me. Yeah. I'm always thinking like a painter would think. I'm, imag I'm, I'm imagining I'm thinking like a painter. I, I think yeah. in colour, I think in texture. Well, another fascinating day with a very, very interesting man. We're down here at uh, Mary Gum. John, pleasure, mate. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much for having us in your studio and your shed. Obviously seeing the canvas stretched and all of these beautiful techniques that you do. Now, it takes John a long time to paint his paintings. That's why we could only do some small sections of two of those today. But really fascinating stuff. And your knowledge of natural history and birds is amazing as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's very, very, very good. Um, but yeah, we've really, really had a great time. Uh, as always, we want to thank uh, our sponsors, Kramer. Uh, as you can see, that John was using Chroma Krill paints today, and they really are uh, fabulous paint. Uh, don't forget to also come in and see us on Facebook as well these days. We've got a huge Facebook community, so come in and like us on there. But also, if you want to see more of John's work and all of the other uh, great artists, you can come into colonialife.com.au. Uh, come and talk to us. We've got a whole bunch of things going on in there, events, lots of great stuff. You can even have a chat to Jan, John. Uh, also, your website is johnandersonart.com.au. So if you want to see some of John's work and go and have a talk to him, that's where he'll be as well. But until we meet again, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. See you next time, guys. Bye.